Hi everyone, do you know what the Bible says about divorce and remarriage? We got a lot of questions about this. And so in this video, we're going to answer these questions and more. So let's get to it and let's see what God's Word, Scripture, says about it. Now just very quick, if it's the first time that you're here, my name is Daniel and welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider it so you won't miss any of our future videos. Now, what does the Bible say about divorce? How does God feel about it? Well, we know He doesn't like it because He created marriage to be held in honor of all things. Hebrews 13 verse 4 says, Let marriage be held in honor among all. And let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. So God doesn't like divorce. I mean, who likes divorce? Nobody likes it. If you go through it, it's a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, especially for the kids. And they have to go through this for the rest of their lives. It causes a lot of damage. That's why God hates divorce. The Amplified Bible says in Malachi 2 verse 16, For I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel, and him who covers his garment with wrong and violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, keep watch on your spirit, so that you do not deal treacherously, and then in brackets, with your wife. Divorce is a terrible experience, and that is why it is so important to pray before you marry someone, to make sure that it is the right person, to make sure it is God's will. Because you know, marriage is amazing if God is in it, if He's in the middle. But if you marry the wrong person, it can be the worst experience in your life. Genesis 2 verse 24 says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And then in the New Testament, Matthew 19, verse 6, So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. That's why divorce hurts so bad. Because you've been with that person for a long time. You were one with that person. And now what you were, could have been, all of it has been ripped from you. But if your partner does not love you anymore, if he or she has cheated on you, then this is a situation where it's actually permitted to divorce. Listen to the answer that Jesus gave certain people when they asked Him about it. Matthew 19 verse 3 to 11, And Pharisees came up to Him and tested Him by asking, Is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? He answered, Have you not read that He who created them from the beginning made them male and female? and said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce, and to send her away? He said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. The disciples said to him, If such is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. But he said to them, Not everyone can receive this saying, but only those to whom it is given. So in this passage, Jesus says that the only way that you can divorce and remarry, marry someone else, is when your partner committed sexual immorality. This is very important to understand. Listen to verse 9 again. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another, commits adultery. But now, this is only for the person who is not guilty. The person who stayed true to their partner. They can remarry. Listen to what Paul also says about divorce and remarriage. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 6 to 17 Now, as a concession, not a command, I say this, I wish that all were 
as I myself am, but each has his own gift from God, one of one kind and one of another. To the unmarried and the widows I say that it is good for them to remain single, as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. To the married I give this charge, not I, but the Lord. The wife should not separate from her husband, but if she does, she should remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband, and the husband should not divorce his wife. To the rest I say, I, not the Lord, that if any brother has a wife who is an unbeliever and she consents to live with him, he should not divorce her. If any woman has a husband who is an unbeliever and he consents to live with her, she should not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is made holy because of his wife, and the unbelieving wife is made holy because of her husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. But if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. In such cases, the brother or sister is not enslaved. God has called you to peace. For how do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? Only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him and to which God has called him. This is my rule in all the churches. All right, there you go. It's straightforward. And let me just say this again in case you missed it. If you were married to an unbeliever and they divorced you, then let it be so. You are not enslaved. Verse 15 says, But if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. In such cases, the brother or sister is not enslaved. God has called you to peace. Now, this might be difficult to hear, but I, I need you to listen and to understand this. Even if your partner committed sexual adultery against you, against God, because the marriage is holy and the bed should be undefiled, but if he or she did it, it doesn't mean that you should divorce them. It just means that you are allowed to. Now, whether you divorce them or not, you still have to forgive them. Trust is something else, but you have to forgive them. Ephesians 4 verse 32 says, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. you know, some people carry grudges. They carry that hate, that unforgiveness, that bitterness, that poison, unforgiveness in their hearts for years. And sometimes it carries over to the kids. Some single parents even tell their kids lies about their father or their mother. How sad is that? Did you know that if you don't forgive your ex, God won't forgive you? I'm not saying so. God is in His Word. Matthew 6 verse 14, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Don't let bitterness, that anger, that unforgiveness rule in your heart, because then you become a slave to it. Move on with God. And if you are in a situation right now where you're thinking about divorcing someone or marrying someone else, take it to God and pray. Talk to Him about it. Hebrews 4 verse 16 says, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. God knows everything. He knows you, He knows your future, and you need to go to Him to talk to Him about everything in your life, especially big decisions like divorce or marrying someone for the rest of your life. Go to Him. Breakthrough prayer. Pray and pray and pray until you hear from Him, and He will lead you forward. Now, if you need marriage advice, please watch one of these videos here, and I'll see you there. And always remember, God loves you. And I love you too. Bye. Take my